Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, of course, we've got all your usual favourites, and this week we're also going to talk about Royka Tech too. And he's back. Yes. What have you done with Ollie? Uh, you don't want to know. All right. Well, let's do it. Come on. <laughs> Earlier on, I was doing something which James absolutely loves to do. What was that? That is scrolling through Instagram uh. endlessly. Um, in doing so, I discovered that a friend of mine, Elena, actually recently took part in the Eroica event over in Italy in Tuscany. So the Eroica event, in case you're not aware, is basically a cycling event which really does focus on the heritage of cycling and it uses the infamous white roads too that are used in the Strada Bianchi oh, race in the beautiful region of Tuscany. An absolutely epic race but I guess the unique thing about this event is that well it's all about retro it's all about like John says about heritage mm. and well the organizers really make sure of that and they imply some really vigorous rules to make sure you're not using new tech and you're keeping to that old feel. But I thought it'd be really interesting to go through the pros and cons and find some new tech around this event. Yeah, let's start with the essential then, the bike. Oh, very essential. Yeah, important indeed. <laughs> uh, now, the organizers state that a bike being used must be from 1987 or earlier. There are no two ways about it. So carbon, gonna be pretty unlikely, yeah. unless you've got a really early prototype of some sort. Aluminium, mm. probably the same too. So really, steel is the material of choice. Oh, I do love a steel bike. So do I, mate. Yeah, plus you can't get an old frame and then chuck some new bits on it like, what well, Ollie would do. You have to have a down tube shifters. You can't have integrated gear and brake levers because remember, they weren't round until 1990s, wasn't it? Yeah, 1990, I think, officially released to the public. Yeah. 89, I got a feeling I saw Phil Anderson riding for TVM, riding up Brass Knocker Hill in Bath using them. Weird as these things <laughs> pop back I into love, my head. I anyway, love the web. Uh, yeah, so, so there we are. You, you, you can't use those. It does, though, say in the rules, nothing about bar end shifters. Yeah, now, cross riders used to use them. Yeah, just, you know, old cross They're riders a bit used quirky. to use them. Yeah, weird, wonderful, yeah. definitely pre 87. I guess maybe the organisers would say, go on, son, you're mm. allowed to use those. Um, this is all a bit before my time, mate, but I have to yeah. say. You, you weren't born in 87, were you? Definitely not. But I absolutely love it. I love learning about it, and I love finding out what happened back in back when it was retro and beautiful. Yeah, you're not really into the marginal gains thing, are you? Oh, I hate marginal gains. I've never seen you so, you're such a happy-go-lucky lad. I like, I just like the grit and determination. Yeah. I like the real heroes the of golden the sport. Age. The golden age, steel <laughs> bikes. Just makes me think of Hercules. It's funny that the golden age, right? We say golden age, for some people, the golden age is right now in cycling. And then for others, it's like oh. 1910 to 1930. Send me back. Yeah. Now, mate, I reckon you'd quite enjoy the Eroica because you enjoyed that in 1903, right? Yeah. But there's a few other things you can't use. Clipless pedals, you can't use them. I've used them before, fine. All right, well, you can't use your trusty, comfortable physique saddle. <laughs> I've got you stumped now, haven't I? Because Please. you had a bit of an incident recently. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I, I, I still struggle to look at that. It brings back horrific, horrific memories of insane pain. Mm. And that every man out there will know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, mate, I still feel the pain when I watch that. It's horrific. I, I always want to watch that again. Anyway. No, no. I guess some proper shorts will help for the discomfort of riding a bone shaker of a bike, wouldn't they? Oh, you wish. This is where <laughs> things get a little bit interesting because the organisers also stipulate or recommend, certainly, that you use clothing pre-1987 too. What? So woolly jumpers, uh, chamois leather and leather sole shoes? That is correct. Oh. Although I guess, you know, like we've already said, you probably could get away without using an old goat skin leather up in your crotch and nether regions. <laughs> but uh, the good news is, though, you can still use your modern day safety helmet too. Well, insurance would be happy, I guess. Yeah. So, are you up for it? 
I don't know, mate. I like these lovingly old bikes that have been restored and cared for mm. to remain in great condition. Uh, there's something about it which just kind of breaks my heart, really, when I see them getting used all over these gravel roads. Take, for instance, my old Eddie Merckx. You've seen that, oh, the blue one. Lovingly white. restored. Okay, it's got modern components on it, so mm. I wouldn't be allowed to even take to the start line. But I put modern bits on it because, well, they work better. Yeah. And generally, I don't want to see my bike deteriorate due to one ride as much as I would love to use it in the event. It's, it's a shame really, I rarely well, ride that bike, it's just gathering dust. Right, fear not John, because, well, I did some looking around and I found some companies that you can rent all the kit off that you need for the event. But I know you've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money over the last years, so, well, what would you do if you were riding the event? Right, well, firstly, uh, unless I found an absolute bargain, yeah. I probably wouldn't buy anything new. The reason being, I just can't afford it. And as yeah. things get older, the prices generally tend to creep up too. Uh, so I would probably start looking around the second-hand market, really, to try and find the ideal products to use. What, like, I mean, you've done a fair bit of looking on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Would this be somewhere to look for the retro old style vintage kit? Yeah, that would probably be my two options that I'd use. As much as I'd love to go back out to Japan and Corsa Corsa and visit Saatchi and check out all those bikes, I just couldn't face it, honestly. Yeah. The risk of them getting damaged, so that's what I would do. I'd cast my net wide using an international uh, you know, marketplace, basically. Mm. Uh, but you've got to think as well, there are so many old frames out there, it's actually really easy to do because compatibility was almost a breeze because all you need to worry about is your seat post diameter and your bottom bracket thread. All right, yeah, maybe a headset thread as well. It's fairly simple. Odd things like that out there. Gearing, nice and easy too. Just get some old down tube shifters. They don't have to be fancy. Again, compatibility, friction mode. You are <laughs> laughing. There is nothing to worry about whatsoever. Yeah. Mix and match, although that would probably Oh, I don't know, it just wouldn't wouldn't satisfy me, but it would because I just couldn't use that new stuff. No. Do you know what? It's funny. I remember seeing about five years ago, some of the Rabo ladies team, they took part in Eroica. So Roxanne Knetterman, the daughter of uh, Gary Knetterman, former world road race champion yeah. of the Netherlands, she loaned one of her dad's old woolen world champs jerseys to Pauline Ferrand Prevost, who at the time was the world ladies road race champion. And she wore that, and I thought it oh, looked so absolutely cool. amazing. Uh, and then Roxanne herself, she wore one of her dad's old TI Rally jerseys, I think it was, in the event too. And I just thought to myself, that is really taking part. You know, mm. like you take, you're getting great riders yeah. in the sport, partaking and using this kit, which kind of, I would be too scared to use, oh, but well, they, they did it. I mean, would you guys splash the cash or would you hunt like John if you're riding an event like the Eroica? Do let us know in the comment section below because, yeah, we would love to hear from you. Yeah, just let us know if you've been mm. involved in it. And why not submit pictures of your retro bikes oh, too? Yeah. We'll have a retro bike week. One, one week? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely Every on week. that one. No. Right, hot tech now, and with winter rapidly approaching us here in the Northern Hemisphere, here's a couple of products that could well be right up your street. Yeah, how about this one, John? This is darts from Stands No Tubes. Whoa, did you say darts? Yes, I did. 180! <laughs> Love that one. That's a good guy. Yeah, tubeless tyres are getting more and more popular, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I'm using them now. And, well, punctures are popular, especially in UK in yeah. winter. And this concept is said to seal up those big holes that, well, traditional sealant wouldn't have. Yeah, so essentially you load up the dart, which can easily be taken with you on your ride in your pocket, and you simply place it in the tyre, in that existing hole, rip it back out, and there is a, a sort of a feathery, rubbery-like material mm. on it, and it creates a chemical reaction with the sealant inside of the tyre and bonds, seals that hole up, and allows you to carry on your ride. Now, you do have a little bit of feathery-like material that pops out of the tyre, but I've been told, as you ride along, it gradually wears away and you don't even feel it too. So other systems out there, they have these big old rubbery worms and mm. you would definitely feel that on a road bike tyre. I mean, it sounds absolutely perfect, yeah. but what if you forget your darts? Mm. I mean, you leave the house and, well, they're back at the house, and you're sat by the road, well, here's something that might just save your bacon. Oh, I like the sound of that. Right, I can visualise this next bit of tech right now. I can see myself maybe wearing it roadside while someone else has a puncture and I'm having to wait. It's the Deep Winter Thermo Jacket from Dutch brand Agu, but 
It's not just any old winter jacket. Oh no, this one is heated. Oh, John, you dropped that bombshell, didn't you? Oh, I yeah. love it. And it's also got a USB battery, well, that's chargeable, and that connects to the heating element. I mean, this is the perfect thing for, well, that friend who doesn't like going out on the cold weather rides, Ollie Bridgewood. Oh. And then he's got no excuses to come out with me. Well, there we go. Okay. Tell you what, I tried one of these things on. Uh, not the uh, one from Agu, but it was one from Castelli with Team Sky back at last year's Giro d'Italia. I was having a route around back of the car, mm. and I was like, oh, what's this then? Grubby little Castelli. mess. Yeah, he's grubby little hands everywhere. <laughs> right, right old mess back of the car. Anyway, guy this jacket, put it on, press the button. It felt so warm almost yeah. instantly. It was a great bit. It was like was going in for a... It was a bit like a hug, you know, that sort of like warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Yeah, more tech next week. All right. It's now time for the part of the show called Screw Riding Upgrades. Bye Upgrade! Where you submit both before and after photos of anything cycling related. Oh, yeah, I love And well, bit. we put the votes out for the viewers to decide exactly who wins. And well, the ultimate prize that you could win is the GCN Camelback Eddie Water Bottle. As if by magic, it appears. We're good at that. Uh, anyway, we need to announce, first of all, the winner of last week. And it's between Jeff and Matthias. The winner was Jeff, 87% of the votes. Oh, oh yes. And it was that uh, old specialised hard rock mountain bike into an adventure bike conversion. I, I did see that. It was beautiful. Yeah, I love the, mm. the white and the blue. and It's, sort of, it's like a teal colour mm. of the logos. Absolutely stunning. I didn't vote, actually, either. I did. Who'd you go for that bike? All right, come on. <laughs> right, anyway, get in touch with us on Facebook and we will arrange the delivery. Right. First one this week comes in from Gavin from Ellesmere Port. Uh, now Gavin completed a restoration that turned into a bit of everything. Having bought an old Medi Eddie Merckx Falcon on eBay. Medi, where did that come from? Uh, now the background to this, in the 70s, uh, Merckx licensed uh, some of their lower range bikes to Falcon who mass produced using his name basically, just trying to get ah. an extra bit of coin. Anyway, all that aside, um, I will continue Gavin's little story. Yeah. Now, Gavin decided to go to town on this bike a bit. So he fully powder coated the frame, Beautiful. stripped and polished the forks. Lovely. Put some Shimano 600 cranks on and a rear mech. Lovely bit mm. of kit there. A brook saddle, the cheapest nice. possible rims, and a modern bar and stem. And also put new caliper brakes and levers, and stopping is important. It's a bit of old meets new. Go right. on, scroll down. So there we are. There's the old red and oh. white thing. Yeah, but I mean, look, the mug guards, that nasty little like spoke protector on the rear wheel. It's a bit, it's a bit cheap looking, now, isn't it? Yeah. It is really. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at that. What you turn it into? That. Oh, that is nice. It isn't doesn't it? look like the same bike, does it? No, it doesn't. I was just thinking that it looks totally different. Yeah, yeah but the angles. If you look at the angles, they're super relaxed. You know, it's like a. It, it was. Yeah, just a, like a low-end bike, basically, back in the days. That's I, a beautiful thing, yeah, I yeah. have to say. Oh, I, I, I love it, it, mate, I love it. I mean, it's yeah. the fact that, you know, he's even got the, the sort of the gold bit there on the top tube that says Corsa inside of it. Mine's a Corsa Extra, Gavin. Oh. Just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful it's stunning. one. Yeah, yeah. I, like the, like the bar I like the bamboo in the background. Or right, sort of. Yeah. Who's yeah. Gavin up against then? Well, tell us. Go ahead. Rob from Gateshead in the UK. When Rob retired last year, it gave him more time for his passion, and that is cycling. So Rob decided to establish a pain cave, as we all like to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, the only space Rob has was his garage, which is 25 meters away from the house, across a public footpath, and does not have mains or any power supply. Anyway, quite a bit of information. Yeah, Rob. Rob's yeah. original plan was to use a petrol driven generator, but I mean, well, that annoyed him and the neighbours. It would annoy every. I mean, a petrol driven. <laughs> imagine that, like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Rob bought a big, powerful jump start battery and <laughs> 1000 watt power inverter, which is managed to run for two one hour sessions on Zwift, powering an elite Diretto turbo trainer, Apple TV and a TV screen and two fans. I'm I never you knew you could do so much off of a jump start battery. No, not I. Never used one. He then got a second jump start battery, which is used for the lighting alone. This is great. Do you know what you should try and get? I, reckon, you know, I, I wasn't Rob. expecting that. I wasn't expecting like a, a pain cave. 
feel. Like that, no. No. I reckon Rob should get uh, like a wind turbine on top of his garage, something like that. I mean, I'm sure the neighbours would absolutely or love that. Or solar power. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or solar power, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if you annoyed them with that petrol generator, imagine oh. the annoyance you could do with a ginormous wind turbine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right, right. Right, so there's so right, so the garage to start with. Those the that's, jump That's starts. the jump start back. I tell you what, you wouldn't want to start sweating and dripping on that, would you? Oh, God. They're a bit, I mean, when I go on the turbo or rollers, I end up like, a lot. You know, like oh, you get the beads of sweat. Like, and you, like that. Yeah, it's like a little get, fountain. You start getting. Spurting. Yeah, you start getting that, that sweat going everywhere. Don't oh, no, he's closed yeah, the back as well. Yeah, they are. Rob, health and safety oh. inspectors come around. You're in big trouble, yeah. my friend. But it looks cool. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, it looks cool. But to be honest, it's not really up to us, is it? No, I'd like it to be. Yeah. Oh, what's this? Models and modelling. He's obviously into a bit of. Oh, I love seeing that. Bit of sort of like box. airfix. And what's stuff in like that, that box? Yeah, That's show us inside that yeah, box. I want to get in that box. I like box. a bit of airfix. Yeah. Please. But yeah, as I say, it's not up to us. No. It's up to you guys back home. So make sure you pop up on the top right hand corner yeah, and vote in the poll. Yeah. Who are you going to go for? I think I know already. I like both. Yeah, next week, someone's going to be winning that bottle. Don't drink from it. Sorry. I kissed it instead. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> All right, we've got some winners to announce. Yes! Get in. Mate, you haven't won, I don't think. Uh, honestly. I love this guy, he's so crazy. Uh, of the recent Hammerhead Carew competition that we held. And with no further ado, James, bring in the names, read them out, and let those lucky viewers know exactly who's won. Chris Bailey from the US, Horatio Hernandez from GB, Jana Steinkemp from Germany, Kevin Saunders from the Netherlands, Stefan Francens from Belgium. Oh, yes. Oh! What a lucky bunch. We will be in touch very soon to arrange delivery of that. And well, nice one. Yeah, congrats to all you guys. I'm sorry you didn't win, mate. Sorry. Sorry. Don't remind me. It's now time for my favourite bit of the show. It's the bike fault. This genuinely is your favourite yes, bit. Yes, it is. It? I get to ring the bell. Yeah, it's the only time you ever want to come in. Yeah. I'm like, look, you've got to do the rest of the show too. <laughs> anyway, so to get in the bike vault, you need to submit a picture of your beloved pride and joy. You need to make it look show and shine, spick and spam. Mm. It needs to look a million dollars, baby. Yes, it does. Use that uploader tool found down below <laughs> in the description. And well, who knows? Maybe, just maybe, it'll get into the bike vault. Just but we maybe. rate the bikes nice or super nice. Now, I have stripped and searched this bleeding workshop, and I still can't find that bell. You haven't got the bell? No. But I have been told you're going to improvise for us yeah. this week. So what have you got? Go on. I dread to think what you've brought in. Probably a one-man but. Right, so a part tool crane race sitting and a hammer installation thing and a hammer. Right, right, right. Stop that. Stop that right now. So at least try and sort of reduce the metallic okay. sound. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Sadly, I can't do the old ringing the bell because we haven't got the bell, have we? But we've got that. So that's that. But I need the hammer. <laughs> He absolutely loves it. Right, let's crack on. First one. Right. Uh, who have we got? John from Dallas in Texas. You ever been to Texas? No. Ever been to Dallas? No. No, because if you haven't been to Dallas, you wouldn't have been to Texas. Right. Uh, <laughs> the I've Argon. Been, I've been to Houston. 18. Texas. Yeah. Check that bad boy out. We appear to have a giant eyeball in the background. Yeah, I was wondering that. Possibly the biggest eyeball I've ever seen. I was wondering, something's looking at me, it's strange here. <laughs> it's just staring right at me. Did you ever see about, like, I think it was in Sydney Harbour, a ginormous plastic duck, like a bath duck, appeared there one day, just like in the city. Just, yeah, just like floating around. We should do that with an eyeball. Go to Dallas, go, Texas. Go everywhere with it. That's that's a whopper of yeah. an eye. Uh, anyway, right, back what do to we the make bike. What We've got a SRAM E-Tap on there, haven't Full we? Full carbon. Got some interesting colour on the bar tape going on there. Super cast, super oh, cast, yeah. whatever it is. Half it's, and half. Yeah, it's nice. Um, part of me likes it just because of that ginormous eyeball. Yeah. What are you thinking? We haven't, we haven't got the bike vault, um, you know, aficionado Ollie in here this week who no, really likes I mean, to scrutinise these photos. I'm a big fan of the eyeball and it's blue as well, blue eyes. And the only thing that is the crank. Have you got blue eyes? Yeah, I have, yeah. I never noticed. 
Into the deep blue. Into the deep blue, baby. Yeah. Right, yeah, so the crank, not at three o'clock. The, no. the valve's kind of all right. It's a bit cluttered, though, with, with that. I mean, I would have had it closer up to the eyeball. I would yeah. have gone over that fence. I think, to be honest, John. Yeah, it's the, it's the metal railing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's putting me off the metal railings. Yeah. I think we're going to give you a nice... Nice one, John nice from job. Dallas in Texas. Right, next up is Oliver uh, in Crevic in France. That, that looks... Ideal looks beautiful. It That's just, the ideal road for me. Yeah. Empty. Straight. Nothing else. Empty. It's not and straight. It's <laughs> yeah, I know what you not mean. Not straight. Yeah. <laughs> flat. I meant the word flat and straight came out. <laughs> but it's definitely not flat. <laughs> I mean straight. Anyway, I'll get there in the end. I'll get there in the end. I love it. But it looks smooth and beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. It just looks, you know, and that's just ideal weather for bike biking. Yeah, he's loaded up his bicycle. Yeah. You know, he's riding into the sunset. No, I... Well, he's not, actually. It's not even a sunset. What we but thinking, he will John? be at the end of the day. I'm thinking super nice. Tonight. Yes, we are. Right. Please, come on. Right. <laughs> yeah, so you know. Right, who's next? John from Surrey. John from the Surrey Hills, Sydney, Australia. Yeah, that's him. It's Surrey, isn't it? It's not... So, no, it's, it's Surrey, Surrey, Surrey. Surrey. I don't know. Never been. Yeah. Invite us out there. Invite. Right, say <laughs> right. Anyway, right. We got a right, Bianchi the Ultra. Ultra. That is nice. It's, it? it's, it's next to like a Celeste um, Vespa. Vespa. Yeah. yeah. With a couple of. With a couple of. Well, hang on, hang well, on. Right. That's a that's a, a dog that's, and a rabbit. Yeah. There's a dog riding with with a. I mean, right. We've got to talk about health and safety again here. Yeah, we've no, already had that. We've already had that pain cave. Very dodgy electrics going yeah. on. Now we've got what looks to be. Is it a, is that a Labrador? I don't know, but it's holding, it's like a it's brass Labrador holding a- A flat white. Yeah. And what's, well, they're both holding a flat what's white. What's Jessica Rabbit doing <laughs> on the back? Jessica Rabbit, she does awfully good for a rabbit. All right, well, what's it doing? <laughs> oh, it's got a cup of coffee or tea as well. Sat on board a Celestia Vespa, Vespa, all brass. Um, I think it's brass. I mean, I like got, it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't mind that statue in my house. Yeah. And then the bike. Yes, yes, that's right. The bike, the actual focal point of the bike vault. Uh, we digress. Uh, so Celeste, we, uh, um, check, yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Isn't I it? like that. That's a KMC. It, like literally matching every aspect yeah. of this bike. You've got a saddle. You've got uh, the different decals. You've got the bottle cages. You've got the chain. It is it's yeah, all looking it's all good, matching, matching. even with the Vespa behind and yeah. the rather strange rabbit and uh, Labrador. Labrador. Yeah. Um, but you. But it's but, a nice bike. Yeah. I. I Personally, I mean, even though the bike's caught, you know, the front wheel there, look at the front wheel, slightly blurred. Slightly, yeah. I think just the the mid-ride stop, having seen that statue, that ornament, whatever yeah. you want to call it, I don't know. Um, ride along, stop. Oh, look, that matches my bike. Oh, Picky. the bike vault. Oh, the GCN yeah. Tech lads. Oh, Picky. they'll be keen for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yes, you wrote yourself super nice. Whoa! Right, okay, next up is Terence from the Gold Coast in Australia. Boom! You've been to the Gold Coast? No. No, okay, I I've wish. driven past it. Terence, another invite. Yeah. Um, uh, That's one of those tracks. That is the Trek Madone yeah. Aero. Look at that paint job. I mean, that That's is a bike that I could see Elton John riding. I'm trying to think what that paint job is called. Because right. it's just been released. Being with I I. Yeah. Isn't it? I can't remember now. Oh, that's going to frustrate me, but oh, that's a beauty. Proper I love it. You know, sparkling. It changes as you, as you move around. I mean, that says more about bling. I could see Jay-Z riding that with his diamond-crested yeah. necklaces. Yeah. Yeah. Who's no, Jay-Z? I'm Jay-Z. You mean me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But yeah, it's stunning, I think. I think I've think i got yeah. to give that a super nice Yeah, one. good depth of field. Go on. All right, all right. Right. Got that hammer right. in Who's, who's last up, then? Um, uh, Peter Fort from California. I yeah. love California. Oh, look at that. What, what do you go for? A Pepsi or a water? Well, we've, we've got Coca Cola, Coca -Cola. Pepsi, and we've got Glacier Water by the yeah. looks of things in the background on those vending machines. <laughs> Ironically, the Pepsi machine doesn't appear to stop Pepsi. No, I was I was a bit confused about yeah. that. Yeah, and it's, it's a Coca Cola vending machine. It's Monster. Is that part of the Coca Cola group? I think it is. Yeah. yeah okay. So is Sprite. Um, yeah. We, we digress. Um, uh, We're good at that, aren't we? <laughs> you What's and I? the bike? Oh, that, that bike's nice. Isn't the it? specialised. Well, it's a specialised alley, isn't alley, it? Yeah. 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 Do you know what? I had a specialised alley. That was my first ever bike. Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. That's nice even bike. before I knew you. Yeah. yeah way I before. knew you not when you weren't in cycling that long. No, you knew me when I was 17. Yeah. yeah. 
We went on a holiday together, do you remember? Yeah, training, training camp. camp. Oh, God. Yeah. We were, were you only 17? Yeah, well, I was 18 then. Oh, good. Yeah. Because you had a lot to drink that week. <laughs> we, right. We won't talk about that training there camp. There wasn't much yeah, training. No, but not right. much. That is beautiful, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the red of that. Guy. I like that. Yeah, and he's matched the um, the handlebar tape, yeah. and he's the got cranks. it at three o'clock, just about. It's uncluttered, isn't it? Un Except you know. for the vending machines. But we're there. I mean, we're there. Yeah. What are we saying? I just think, again, it's just someone riding along. They've thought, I'm just going to take a picture of my bike, send it in. Yeah. Go on. The nail's in. Super nice. <laughs> More Bike Vault next, next week. There we go, nearly time for the end of the show. And mate, it's been good to have you back mate, in here. I absolutely love it. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I get really energized when I come in here. When he comes in here, it's like, you get the biggest tangent in the world and we manage to find it somehow. I don't know how we do it. No, I don't know how we do it either. No. Remember as well to like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And also, once you've subscribed, what do they have to do too? Click on that bell so you get a notification every time we upload a video. That's right. And also, yeah. don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got hoodies, we've got jumpers, we've got shorts, we've got socks, oh. we've got t shirts, you Bottles. name it, we've Everything. got it. Yeah. And now, for two more great videos, how about clicking, yeah, like that? Is that like some sort of yeah. modern sign? Yeah. Cool. You teach me all these stuff. Well. <laughs>